We're going to talk today about um, contesting some more. Now, as this video is rolling, I will go ahead and link a card somewhere up around there. Right there. <laughs> somewhere up there on YouTube, I'll link a card that uh, links back to our contesting good or bad episode that we recorded with uh, several more of us here. And that was that was like a year ago, I think. Um or maybe late last, yeah, about a year ago. I think that was about a year ago. I remember that was one of the ones I recorded when I was actually in Costa Rica. So um, so we talked about it then. But I want to welcome tonight to the channel uh, Steve Goodgame, um, other, St oh. other Steve KM9G temporarily offline. I'm just going in the order of my screen. <laughs> Kyle AA0Z and Rob N1NUG, 741. First. First. <laughs> yeah, first. Last. Right. As long as they have coffee. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, coffee's good. <laughs> so does in... that override the first in the chat room? Uh, <laughs> yes. Maybe. Yes. <laughs> That's good. That is good. Oh, there's Sterling. What do you know? Better late. You, you, you can't have a contest. Better late than never. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Without Sterling. That's what he I was said. Thinking. Laundry. I said contesting. I won. <laughs> Sterling, we just started. Somebody talking about contesting ethics? Hey. Um, I got you here, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So we were talking about, uh, we're going to kick it off. I mean, we, we literally just started. Um, Good timing, then. Kick it off and talk about contesting ethics as far as live streaming goes. So uh -huh. I, I know that some of you have mentioned live streaming contests. Uh, a couple of us live streamed Field Day, which they say Field Day is not a contest, but they keep points for it, so it kind of is a contest. Um, I live streamed a couple of times during the Thirteen Colonies event. There was one guy, one of the one of the control ops. I think it was K Two Alpha, was streaming himself on Twitch during Thirteen Colonies. Now, Thirteen Colonies is a special event. It's not a contest. There's no points awarded. You don't get extra points for the number of stations you contact. You know that kind of. Oh, but thing. you do get ham paper. Hand paper, okay. Ham, hand paper. <laughs> yes. <laughs> hand paper, something totally different. Yeah, isn't? yeah, yeah. How many of you have actually live streamed an actual contest? Something that is not field day. Okay, you three have. Okay, yeah. I have not. I have recorded myself doing contesting and then and then posted it later, but I've never live streamed a contest. So I'd like to hear from you guys what you think about. Um, I think I'm just going to leave it as a free for all and have everybody on the screen, and. Um, what do you think? Yes or no? I mean, obviously, you would probably have to mark yourself as using a spotter network. Um, but um, we'll get into that. Yeah. <laughs> well, in most contests, or most of, most of the big ones, like NAQ So Party and the CW Worldwide ones, um, or CQ Worldwide, I'm sorry, CQ Worldwide ones, they, they usually have a category for use a spotter, didn't use a spotter, you know, low QRP, low power, high power, that kind of thing. Um, so I guess it kind of depends on if you how you submit your logs and what you want to put in your in one mm logger ham log. We're using ham log. So <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. Before anybody asks, we're using ham log. Okay, I actually use n one mm for just about everything, including Poda. So okay, uh, Steve uh, KM nine G Steve Kyle or Sterling, you guys raised your hand. So when do you guys go? Sterling, you want to kick it off? No, you go first. I got to go feed my dog, and then I'll, I'll follow her up. So I think that um, the controversy is, you know, th there are ways around where you can stream a contest and not give away who you're working or um, where you're working, mm -hmm. um, your frequency, but it takes a ton of work to, to blank everything out because if you want to show – the audience what you're doing mm -hmm. right you have a place on n1mm that shows your frequency you're probably showing your vfo dial mm -hmm. right so and if you're if you got a waterfall then you're probably showing a, a frequency within or the frequency range within your waterfall so there's three places where you have to blank out right to 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 stream a contest and be legal within the not spotting and i know that there's some other people um that we won't mention here that that got I, I wouldn't say trouble but you know got a lot of heat for streaming 
um, a contest, and you know the the <coughs> theory was well they were soliciting contacts and they were spotting themselves and say hey come work me I'm on 40 meters on this mm -hmm. station, mm -hmm. and I've got a big station you can probably hear me so come come contact me, mm -hmm. um, and I, I'm part of of a couple of contest groups the the biggest one is Society of Midwest Contesters and Craig. Craig Thompson, K9CT, he did an update. He is on the board, the AORL board for contesting, and they are definitely looking at putting together some type of category where you, if you want to stream, and they they recognize, they're, I'm not saying they're finally recognizing, but they're recognizing and they're talking about, hey, there's people that want to stream, and mm -hmm. this is going to be something that is not going away. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be more and more as more young people get into contesting, and that's one of the gateways into ham radio is right. make it a contest, right? All the young people love to, or not, I'm going to say all the young people, but <laughs> people like to game and people mm -hmm. like to stream. And it's a billion-dollar industry on watching people stream their their Doom or their Half-Life or whatever the latest game is, right? True. So, Among us. Who? <laughs> Among Us is the is the latest and greatest game. Among Us, Among yeah. Us. Soul Guys was the last one, and then before that, I Destiny. Know. I I can't keep up with them. There's yeah. so many, right? Yeah, Candy Crush, keep, right? Keep so, Candy the Crush. Lemons. Candy Crush. Candy Crush is my log. Yeah, sim, uh, <laughs> the the Sims. That was that was big in my my day. Yeah. Um. So I mean, it's it's going to be get bigger and bigger, yeah. right? They yeah. have to address it. Mm -hmm. They have to figure out where to put it in what category, but this whole what what do we do in the meantime that's where the gray period is and that's where all these questions are and this is where everyone's getting bent out of shape on what do we do until they put together some type of category that satisfies streaming right, and right um and it, it's going to be a debate i mean it's going to be a debate even after they create these categories for streaming it's still going to be a debate mm -hmm. on you know is ft8 Real ham radio, right? You're always going to have those those curmudgeons that say that ain't ham radio. So, you know, I, I, that's my take on it. I, Sterling probably has another take, and Steve's got another take. Everyone's got a take on it. Yeah. But um, I, I am I, I like to contest. If I could stream all my contests, um, I would. Um, I wish that I had a better setup to allow myself to stream the contest. Sometimes it's a pain in the butt to set everything up from mm -hmm. a streaming perspective. Mm -hmm. um, but I, I, as long as we are doing it in a, a way that shows that you're having fun, it's, a, it's, it's um, promoting the hobby, you're not doing ill will against the, the, um, the contest or the, the code of ethics for contesting, as long as you're in the spirit of the, of the, the game, I think it's totally okay. I I would agree with that. I mean, you know, it seems to me like you you touched on new people for a second, and of course, new people could get interested in contesting. But um, <clears throat> one thing that younger people are definitely interested in is live streaming in YouTube. So if they see you on the air making contacts, they're like, "Wow, he just worked Canada, or he just worked two countries in South America, or whatever." And then they it could it get kind of light the fire for them to want to get into HF in general or or maybe contesting or you know you're going to be like wow well, what are you using oh, you must be running 1500 watts you're like no I'm running 100 watts you know and I just right. talked around the world and, so and, and you have no idea who is watching you on the stream right, right? right so it's it's not like you know I see whenever I contest there's 40 people watching me I have no idea if that is somebody who has no idea what ham radio is right. or somebody that has been in the hobby for 70 years you know so, yeah and i just i always maintain that you know serious contesters are probably not watching youtube while the contest is going on correct <laughs> so, right I mean. right and the, the the serious contesters are serious contesters mm -hmm. i mean mm -hmm. I, you know i got into contesting a while ago and you go to to Hamvention and you go to Contest University yes. and you see Doug Grant and Ward Silver and and uh, um, uh, all the guys that contest at um, um, Northern um, California Contest Club and mm -hmm. New Yan uh, is it the New Yankee 
contest no the 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 new clipper contest club and you see all these guys that you've worked you know and their call signs and they are on the air for 48 hours you know every other weekend contesting right. Right. and that is a ton of time in their butt in the seat and they are absolutely dedicated to the hobby and to the contesting mm -hmm. um so getting that and translating that into streaming and how we can get more people into contesting that's what we need we need that excitement and and it's that new generation of you know the, it's the new generation of of putting all of the technology together with with ham radio and combining it into one and putting it on the internet you know yeah it's just more advertising i i totally agree totally agree i think that's the whole episode in a nutshell <laughs> thanks kyle Wrap thanks kyle 73 see so you guys next time i'm only halfway through my beer something wrong with that mm. well sterling i'm sure you have something to say so what do you got well i agree with kyle uh entirely um i i really think that the way the wave of the future and, and really honestly the wave of the now mm -hmm. is to get ham radio more on the internet um mm -hmm. And I know every I don't know who wants to pick to be uh, devil's advocate, but um, I'll be it for a second. Sure, when you stream, uh, people are naturally inclined to find you. They want to hear themselves on the air, and so naturally, I think, sure, there is a merit in why there there it's a controversy. But I think of the benefit, and and this is almost like right. a, this is like an angel on one shoulder, devil on the other. Like you have to weigh these balances, but I think there there has to be a way to like make it fair for everyone, and that's why we want to get the contesting, uh, I guess Illuminati, whoever makes right. these contesting rules, um, together to like coordinate and make it easier for people to live stream without having you know uh, without getting into trouble. It's similar to like when you're YouTuber, we're all YouTubers here, and so we understand the problems of uh, of, of like copyright and music, but we have no ill will. We have no like we're not intending to gain revenue off of like, I don't know, Kanye's latest album, but mm. his sound, his sounds cool. And we want to put it in the video because people dig it and it helps create viewers, but it's only like a tiny little snippet. Mm. And then boom, they created this whole thing that like totally upended the ability for us creators to have even a smidgen of background music. And, and it, it's kind so it's kind of like that. It's like a lot of people are super afraid of, of ham radio becoming, you know, this, this place, this commercialized place where, you know, you're a streamer, you're making money on that. Now you got this pecuniary interest and you're also breaking the rules by increasing the number of people flowing through your mic, even though you're not uh, putting out uh, uh, your content, your uh, frequency, even if you're not putting out your band, you're still going to be spotted on, on a cluster by somebody, even if you're not using a cluster. Uh, and, and uh, so that'll, that's going to cause the chat to come and find you. And if you turn off the chat people will still find you and say hey i'm watching you on the stream right now <laughs> true <laughs> so that's always going to be a thing and and yeah. and maybe maybe the solution is like we have a new category or we have an unlimited category or mm -hmm. the, the real short-term solution is like we just have a check log like no no live streamer can now participate in the contest or something mm. but anybody who's live streaming can now compete against each other and we can create our own little kind of, I don't know, universe of, of contesting online completely through live streaming. So now the contest people are, 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 are happy with that, I guess. Uh, and the yeah. contesters are happy with that. And, and we are happy with that. Although probably not because we want our scores in the, in their, and everyone logs books, log books and on the magazines. And we want to be, you know, have plaques as well, but I don't know. That's just some of my, my random thoughts. Uh, but I'm totally in the affirmative contesting and live, live streaming contests is, an extremely good way of integrating ham radio in the 21st century mm -hmm. um, because of the gaming industry and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So, I just, I don't see it as that front. big of a deal. I mean, honestly, it's, it seems to me that it would, it would take much longer to go watch somebody on a stream mm -hmm. and then go, go hunt them down and find, you know, find mm -hmm. them then. I mean, I could make five or six other contacts in the amount of time that I would go yeah. load up Kyle's live stream. I mean, unless Kyle's like, you know, operating, someplace that you know north dakota where there are only like eight people anyway <laughs> then you know i can go make more contacts in less time I, I would think than yeah hanging out on live stream doing it i mean yeah I, I guess it's just some people are just getting a little persnickety about it i reckon 
right. you know, and I wouldn't even mind starting slow and having if you loaded up contest calendar and you could pull up, you know, all the contests of the weekend and out of the eight contests that are happening, you could live stream, you know, three of them, you mm -hmm. know, and, and just having like, all right, it's it's a general rule of thumb that you can live stream any state QSO party. You could do NAQP and you could do, you know, uh, um, all of these secondary contests like the um, uh, uh, run for the bacon um, mm. contest oh, and, yeah. Yeah. and, you know, Stu Perry and all these other contests and have all of those be able to be live stream. But if you want to be a serious contester and or not a serious contester, if you want to qualify for the the WR. Um, um, WRTC, mm -hmm. maybe you don't stream those, and I think they're yeah. Sterling mm -hmm. and guys. I'm not really sure how many contests there are to to qualify for that. I think there's like 15, maybe I can't yeah, remember. Some number around there, 15, 20, maybe 25. But yeah, yeah that you have to place in in order to to qualify for the WRTC, right. and and you know maybe even if you're not going to qualify for the WRTC and you have an unlimited um, category. Enter that or enter a check log. I mean, it, it, I would, if one for contesting, you always submit your log, right? You have no idea what you're going to win, right? You might win, you know, first place in St. Louis City. Who knows what the category <laughs> they have, you know? True. So always submit your log because you don't, you don't know what you're going to win. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that, you know, if they do that, they need to take a look at, okay, uh, there was CQ Worldwide Ready, and Kyle streamed it, and but he won first place in, you know, Missouri. Um, you know, what does that look like? Does that is that not a plaque but a certificate? I, you know, who knows? I yeah, I think it looks like a plaque and whatever. And anybody who watched your stream learned how to contest better, and that's a, to me that's a good thing. There you go. Yep. You know, I mean, mm -hmm. if you look at it as if you live stream a contest and you're a big station contester, you obviously know what you're doing. If you're live streaming it, all these people that have kind of shied away from contesting because maybe they're not real good at it, they learn there's some technique there that they can pick up on. And that, mm -hmm. that to me, is not a bad thing. Oh, yeah. I would love for K3LR or um, what's another big superstation? Um, N9, um, who's, the, who's the big superstation that's got the remote station over at, uh, in Maine, but they're in southern um, – Tennessee, you know, who I'm talking about Steve, his name's Steve, uh, W nine SN, I think. Anyway, oh, the, the big, the big super stations, I would love for them to have some type of streaming and just think of the knowledge and the, mm -hmm. the tips and the tricks because mm -hmm. half the, half the time, you know, it, just like Elmerine in, in ham radio, right? Every time that I go down to Ward Station, which is about two hours away from from Sterling and I in in you know south of Steelville, even whenever I go down there and I only operate, let's say I'm down there for 12 hours or 24 hours, and I operate two or three hours, me sitting behind someone who has 30 years experience and just watching them go through the dial mm -hmm. and calling CQ, and you, you would not believe all the tips and tricks that I. I gain on it, it's amazing to watch Ward whenever it's like well it's 4:30 let's let's tune to 15 meters and 15 meters lights up in two minutes you're just like how did you know that <laughs> experience you know? and it's just all, it's right. all experience right yeah yeah and that's where that's where I come from too I'm not a contester but I'm I'm interested in it mm -hmm. so seeing the live streams you know somebody like me would learn about it and, and you know be more apt to participate in it. And, you know, touching on what some of you guys are saying, my thought is it, it really should be up to the contest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, whoever sets the rules for that contest, whether or not they want to allow streaming or set up a different category, like you guys said. Um, but, but one thing that, that you do have to be careful about, and Sterling touched on it, is the whole monetization thing. Mm -hmm. You really can't monetize it if you're streaming, you know, a, a contest. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, so as long as you're not. So why do you say that, Rob? What's that? Why do you say you can't monetize it if you're streaming a contest? Because you can't, you really can't monetize ham radio. Yeah, you, um, it's in the rules. So, well, I think there's a, a lot of nuance to that statement right there that we should probably go down the rabbit hole on some future episode. But right. yeah, so you can't monetize ham radio is I can't sell a pizza over the air. 
but it's not, I can't make money by having an antenna business that I use in my contesting that I don't mention over the air, but you know, I'm using my own antenna because on the stream, I mentioned it, but not over the air. If you can catch the, the subtlety of that, like KB9 VBR makes antennas and sells them. Callum makes antennas and sells them. They're all making, ICOM makes radios and sells them. They're all making money off a of ham radio, oh, but they're not doing make, it on the air. No, no, you can make money off a of ham radio, but I think you've got to look at, and I don't know the exact wording of the, the rules, but you can't make a trans transmission where you have a pecuniary interest or however it's worded. Yeah, I think it's something like you can't make you can't make money directly off of yeah. the operation. Yeah, so I, I would worry about that. I would yeah. I would worry this, about that, and somebody with a bigger brain than me would need to weigh this, in on it. But, the simplest answer to that is to turn off monetization while you're live streaming. Yeah, and that that's what I was saying. And then it, you can it, and yeah. then and then on the replay, assuming you're going to take the video after you end the stream and you're going to let YouTube process it, you can turn on mon. I've gotten to where I, I pretty much do that on all my live streams anyway, because I had some people coming on to a live stream several months ago, and they're like, I had to watch like a like a thirty second ad just to start, and I'm like, really on a because yeah. I didn't think it went live until after replay in anyway, and it's possible that YouTube changed something since I last looked that up as they commonly do. Um, but you know, I don't even turn on monetization on my live stream until like usually the next, like if I stream on Sunday night, I'll go in there on Monday, I'll tweak the tags on it. I might update the description and I'll turn on monetization at that point in time. So while the stream is going, people don't have to jack with that, which you don't want them to anyway. You want them to watch you live. If they have to watch a 30 second ad, then they're already 30 seconds behind to a YouTube stream that naturally runs 15 to 30 seconds behind. So I mean, you, you, you want them to be as, as real time in the chat with you as you want. I mean, at least I do. I mean, it depends on what you're trying to do, I guess. But, uh, but I, if that was the only thing, then that's easily solved is, I guess is my yeah. point. You can turn that off and turn it on later. And then, you know, the next day it shouldn't matter because the contest is over. But yeah, I see what you're saying, Rob. I, I'm curious about what the rules would say about that. Um, cause I think yeah, that, that there's, there's, there's definitely something to be aware of in there i just don't know exactly how that would work together so it'd be interesting yeah neither do get, i neither do to i get to get like a lawyer or something because like that that what what rob is um uh, saying and we're all saying here is like there there is like a what is your intent is the intent right. to to turn on stream monetize it and get on ham radio and use that ham radio to make you money on a stream then that that expands broadly like that right. that has a lot of like interesting implications but but what does it, you know, what does a lawyer think? And what, is, what if your intent is, I like ham radio, but I want to get it out to more people. And the effort of putting it on the internet is worth turning on the monetize button. Does that really mean your ham radio operation is causing you to make money? You know, it's like very, very gray area. And, and a mm -hmm. lot of people will say, nope, it's black and white. Um, but no, yeah. it's really not. Uh, if right. it was black and white, then places like Ham Study Prep wouldn't be able to yeah. buy ads to put in your video right. that you're monetizing. Or even, so. even if we make a YouTube, like I was going to talk about, like why why don't you guys why don't we just do videos and and record a video and then put that on YouTube after the contest? And but yeah, but even then, even even if I just like say, hey, I'm going to go to the park and do a poda, bring in my camera and putting it on on the air uh, or putting it on putting make a putting a video on YouTube and then monetizing it. Well, I brought a camera to with the intent of putting this video of my ham radio operation on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So, what does a lawyer think? You know, how how yeah. can we defend it? You, know? you didn't use ham radio to make. You didn't use the actual on air QSO to make money. Right. Right. So, yeah. That's where I think no, it comes but, in. But you're making transmissions, and if you if you monetize that video, whether it's live or recorded, you still have a pecuniary interest. Which yeah, is. I'm looking at the at part yeah. 97 right now, and it's. I think that I think this is kind of off topic, but it's an interesting subject. Whoever said a minute ago that we should maybe make another video about yeah. that, that's probably not a bad idea. Yeah. <laughs> so, because I could talk all day long about making money on ham radio, because people, I yeah, I'm with Steve on that. We was like, oh, you can't make money on ham radio. I'm like, yes, I totally yes, agree. Can. I'm calling Ella Craft tomorrow. I need a brand new K4 for free because you guys can't sell this yep. for for a profit because it's ham radio. So yeah, there's th that's a blanket well, yeah, statement. That, that's yeah, that's, that's not really at all with it. No, it's not. It's not it's my point. I'm, I'm being sarcastic. Yes. Um, I'm trying to be fun. I'm not funny. I'm sarcastic. There's a difference. So, <laughs> yeah, you're not funny. No, I'm not yeah. funny. But no, my point is that to, to just say, well, you can't make money with ham radio is a false statement. To say, 
you're making a pecuniary, whatever that word is. Um, yeah, yeah, that one. Great word. Interest yeah. while doing a live stream, while doing a live contest. Yeah, I can see a, I can see a gray area in there. And I think I would per personally prefer to err on the side of caution and just, like I said, turn the monetization off on the live stream while it's live. And then if you want to turn it back on the next day, then fine. You know, nobody's going to care because the contest was yesterday. So, um, that's that's kind of how I well, look at that. They'll still care, Jason. You know that. Well, <laughs> the people who angry the people thumbs down yeah. guys always angry. angry. <laughs> He's already here on this video. Yeah, oh, I'm sure he is. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. sure he is. So, but yeah, I mean that's that's an interesting topic that I would like to explore more. I'll put it that way. And back to <clears throat> sorry, back to reel us back in. No. Um, <laughs> doesn't so I don't stream on Twitch. Um, I have an account, and I watch some stuff on Twitch, not a lot. Doesn't, whenever you stream on Twitch, can't you, like, mark some type of video and it goes back, like, 30 seconds so you can, you can grab clips from that, yes. that, um... Highlights. Yeah, yeah. highlights. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's a, it's actually a thing on YouTube now, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, and maybe I, YouTube gaming, but yeah, there's a... When Sterling streaming, does it all the time. When you're, when you're streaming, you can hit a button and it'll it'll like save that as a, as a clip. Because hmm. so, what I was gonna get getting back uh, with the why don't we make a video versus like just streaming? Well, mm -hmm. it's because making videos that are telling a story and that are watchable is really hard. Um, but streaming introduces it to a different audience, right? Mm -hmm. um, but you can also basically kill two birds with one stone by hitting that highlights button whenever you say you have like a salient point or a really crazy contact you can you can combine those into like a highlight reel and those videos get get lots of views and lots of impressions and engagement mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all the while you also have like a chat you know in a live stream and 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 you get to like you know be able to share that in real time to people who watch it and, and i guarantee you people watch it it's it's mm -hmm. crazy Oh, yeah. um, so whenever you create that highlight, do you, it just puts it as a, a timestamp and then you have to go back and rename it and put, put that video together with all the highlights or does it do that automatically? In Twitch, it, it does it sort of automatically. It, uh, it, it pulls the video out as its own video, um, hmm. as its own highlight. So that you can, you can export and change. You have, you have to do some manual process to like name it and tag it and, and make a description. But you captured it. Stuff. But it, yeah, hmm. it seizes the capture, and it's it's a lot easier than before. Before you would like record the whole live stream, and and you would see me like doing stupid stuff on my CW streams, and I would write down the timestamp, so I could go back and like trim that out and make make yeah. a little highlight. Right. Um, but now it's a lot quicker, and I think YouTube's adopted that. Not Wouldn't sure. it be cool if we could get N1MM? You know how it it can shoot. Uh, UDP packets out of N1MM, and yep. that's how you control rotors and whatnot. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could, every time you log to contact, you hit enter, it would send a UDP packet or something to YouTube. It would go back in time a minute, snip that video, put the contact in the description, or make a timestamp, and then combine all those videos, all those highlights together, and that then after the contest, yeah, all the <laughs> after the contest is done, it automatically uploads, and then it's got timestamps on every single contact that awesome. you made, and there's your yep. there's your highlight reel. Yeah. Yep. So one of the things that I think that is is lost, a lost art, is that ham radio used to be the pioneering, leading edge, front line of technology, right? And it kind of got dusted, and I think we need to dust that off and bring it back to life because what you just mentioned Kyle is is fantastic that's what ham radio is all about is taking something that no one's ever thought of before no one's ever done before combining a whole bunch of stuff that you found in your garage in your basement in your uncle's house and on the side of the road and making something awesome out of it that then moves the state of the art that much farther forward I mean Wi-Fi wouldn't have existed without ham radio I'm sure um, right. You know, there's a lot of things that wouldn't have existed without ham radio. Mm -hmm. And right now we're at the point where the, the old men, the OMs are winning when they criticize everything that we do on YouTube, when they tell us that, you know, you shouldn't do this and you shouldn't do that. And no, this is all about experimenting and moving the hobby forward. And mm -hmm. they, yeah. they stopped. It's our turn now. Yeah. Or, or even Sterling had this idea. I, I didn't have this idea where 
you take two or three people and put them in a Zoom window like, like we're doing, and you have commentary on ham radio, and you explain what people are doing in the background. You know, where you, all right, yeah. so Steve went to 20 meters, and it's 5 o'clock, but, you know, Rob is still on, on, on 40 meters. Is Old that going to be, cotton. yeah, is that going to be a, a is that going to be a, a good decision for Steve? Let's see how many contacts. And then, you know, as yeah. you know, and do com commentary on the background. And, and instead of, you know, it's very hard to contest, keep up with the chat and also uh, concentrate on what you're doing. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I even have a hard time keeping up with the chat on, well, I can't keep up with the chat on the <clears throat> trivia night because there's right. so yeah. much going on. Right. Yeah. So, that's why Frank exists. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I need Frank the tank. I'm going to start, I'm gonna have to start charging several of you guys rent for Frank, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I've actually been working with a guy who was doing some contesting, and he did this really cool move. It was like, you know, Sterling and Rob are having a QSO, and he just breaks in, right? He goes, uh, N0 SSC, up five. And so that color commentary you're right. talking about, it would be like, yeah. let's go up five and see if he can make that contact. Right. And, right. Yeah. you know, all three of us tune our own BFOs up mm -hmm. and you know, we're listening for it and we hear it. And like, he like did. Right he now, made it. That was amazing. He got mm -hmm. that in his logs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That would be so cool. Man, yes. Right now, it'd be great. Because, like, my, so my wife right now is watching. She she has uh, NFL Red Zone and, like, the behind-the-scenes ticket and all that stuff. And there's, like, 20 games going on. And you have, uh, like, what's his name? The guy with the big ears, like, commentating everything. Mm. And it's like... It tells me, like, uh, I, I mean, I know football, but, like, I don't, I'm not, like, as much as her. She's the, the football lover of the, of the house. Well, that's how my wife is, too, man. She just, and I'm like. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy. But they tell me, that tells me what's going on. Like, what's the strategy? What's the, what's he, what are these guys thinking? Right. Why is this so important? Like, what this play he did? And, and what are the stats of the, especially history? Because, like, hmm. you can, you can see the personalities of, of each individual player. I imagine you can see the personalities of each contester and how they differ you know, like Ward said, oh, 430 comes around. Maybe he's a really regimented person who knows at 430, you go to 15 meters. But then the other guy's like constantly changing bands and, and looking at scopes and doing all the technology, that sort of thing. It's the World Series of Poker for him yeah. radio content. Well, yeah. Yep. Oh, I yeah. mean, if, if, you That's can, it. if they can commentate... <laughs> World Series of Poker. Right, yeah. You better believe that yeah. there can be some commentary for ham radio. No contests. doubt. That would Seriously. be fun, man. Seth, okay, we just got a new idea here. Seth <laughs> Kyle likes no, his contest. So we, we all need to do this and just commentate on Kyle's contest. <laughs> it would be a roast. It would be great fun no matter what it works. <laughs> right, right, yes. right. Good fun. Oh, and gosh. this is this is also a good thing because if you do a commentator, so let's say I'm the I'm the host of like four people's contests, and I can monetize that stream, and all the all the contesters don't, right? So the pecuniary interest is gone. Yeah, as as it's not there. The yeah, that gives around the problem. Yeah, I'm not on the air. Yeah, I'm just listening. Right. right. Exactly. Huh. So, so that that problem's out of the water. Sterling with the loophole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Me making the bank with you know. You know <laughs> well, you viewers. Set it up with Let's give NBC Sports a call and see if they want to pick it up. <laughs> right, right, it's, yeah. It's the, it's the Ocho. It's yeah. A, yeah, yeah. ESPN, the Ocho. Mm -hmm. There you go. <laughs> next, <laughs> watch, watch, I'll be watching foosball in the next ham radio contesting. Uh -huh. <laughs> radio more is exciting a, than golf. Ham, yeah. yeah, ham radio oh, is a yeah. contact sport. Yeah. So. <laughs> it's not a game. Uh -huh. That would be, that, 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 that's not a bad idea. We're going to have to, we're going to have to discuss that. We're going to have to take what, that, what's your next contest take, take that offline. And Sterling and Carla and I have been talking about this offline. I think we should have a YouTubers Bunch contest weekend where everybody tries to work us like 13 colonies. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. you know, it's your, it's your time to, to be a station holder, Jason, and Sterling and Kyle and I are commenting on what we're hearing on your station holding. And well, that, would be, fun. Well, that would be fun. That would be fun because all of us who are in different states – could register a special event call sign like k2a k2b k2c and all that and then we could coordinate all that together and like you know so we could have represented here just right here we could have texas uh, missouri wisconsin connecticut and wherever the heck you are steve mississippi so, Missis brother. mississippi where, fo where football is an essential business <laughs> yeah, that's right that's right yeah, <laughs> yeah. mississippi and so, texas uh yeah but that would be that that's a good idea yeah we've talked about doing a poda event together Yep. Um, which I think that was is just also too hard to coordinate. <laughs> well, I didn't think we, I didn't think we'd given up on it. I just thought we got. Oh distracted. no, we just haven't figured it out. Yeah, yeah. Getting getting all getting eleven of us, ten of us together to make that happen is uh, difficult. Mm, yeah, 
we have to all pick a part. Yeah, we probably have to do it on the weekend. Right. But that's okay. That's okay. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, that's a great idea, though, with the YouTubers Bunch contest, you know. And then we'll... See how long it takes the OMs to love that one. Yeah, let's do it. Right. Worked all YouTubers. Worked. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Worked all YouTubers. Oh, I've got YouTubers. some thoughts on this. I've been working on it for like a month now. Oh, You're you going to make up some certificates we can send out and everything? We'll send, oh, yeah. we'll send all the winners a YouTubers Bunch t-shirt. No, go. so what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out a, uh, well, I'm not going to print it. We'll make a PDF available with everybody's uh, channel logo in it. Mm -hmm. And then you can just go down and check it off and put down what time you worked them and everything and then submit the log there that way. Because the, the goal is just to work the 13 or 14 or 15 of us. So it wouldn't right. be that big of a piece of paper, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. true. Everybody's going to want to work Chris and Callum for sure. And Hayden. Oh, yeah. Everybody will want to work Hayden. Yeah, everyone's Hayden. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's got to follow the sun. That's yeah. my other gimmick, uh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, Hayden's just going to have to be up at 1 in the morning and, and deal with it. So <laughs> we, we need to get find a JA person to be on our head. Yeah. yeah. I think Hayden would be the hat trick. Yeah. 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 I was just yeah. talking about the, the JA issue. It's not, I guess it's not an issue, but Japan is like the mecca of ham radio. But like, uh -huh. it, since the language is Japanese, we never hear about it here in America. I mean, that's where they make all the radios. So I'm right. surprised we don't see more of this like modern. And so I've been trying to find more people, more Japanese streamers and YouTubers on, on YouTube. And they're out there, but I, I can't read Japanese. So right. it's, it's like a big deal. Hmm. Get on but, the sticks, darling. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> you know. Well, it's you just could, Japanese. You it's could, not hard to learn. You could, after you're done with your CW streams, you could do a Japanese stream. Just learn yeah, Japanese. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, it's always something. I tell you what, you go down to Costa Rica... And I don't know, something about being closer to the equator, I think. Japan is just, you can hear Japan, like, for several hours every morning. Just, like, <laughs> right, like, 15 minutes after the sun comes up, it just, Asia just opens up. It's yeah. freaking you cool. Yeah, some saltwater effect there. Yeah, you know, we're not really that close to the water. Um, we're, we're Closer than I am. Our, well... Our spot is not, I mean, I guess Costa Rica might be closer, but I mean, I can go to Galveston and literally be 20 feet from the water and I don't hear Japan. So, um, it's, it's something about, it's something about the, uh, the latitude and longitude of just being that farther south, closer to the equator. However, that where somebody told me one time, they're like, oh, it's cause we're so close to the equator. Somebody who was down there with me, I'm like, okay, good. Well, there is an equatorial <laughs> skip thing, but you're not going north, south, you're going east, west. Right. So right. maybe you're defining a whole new portion of science i just uh <laughs> maybe somebody just made something uh, up to see if you told the last yeah, yeah. <laughs> the last the last cq the johnston effect uh it's not me uh the no the, but you get to name it you made it oh well yeah sure i can name it the last time we were down there was a cq worldwide well second to last time we were down there was a cq worldwide contest and uh about halfway through the day on saturday 10 meters just opened up 10 meters just loud stations good 10 to 15 megahertz in well not megahertz but probably four to five megahertz in between each station just the waterfall was like solid and then blank and then solid and then blank and then solid and you just go back to these guys and they're running who knows how much power and get on their ti7 stroke kc5 hwv and they come right back to you and just make all these contacts on 10 meters so i get on i get on uh chat with some of my buddies back in in uh, some of my local clubs up here i'm like D guys 10 meters open two or three of them tuned around they're like no, it's no, not. not. Can't hear anything. I'm like, really? Wow. I mean, it was just loud and clear down there. But but uh, and they were all South American stations like Brazil and Argentina and Chile and all these places down there. And just but I wouldn't hear anyone from the states when I was down there on ten meters during that contest. So I don't know. So so back to the ethics question. Do you think that uh, self spotting via streaming is a bigger advantage than having an amplifier? Yeah. No. That's yeah, like yeah, 30 no seconds based, behind. Yeah. No. I'd say no based on Steve's comment earlier. It's going to take you longer to find find somebody yeah, on a live stream. Put it this way. If I had to choose one, I'd choose the amp. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I was contesting, it, if I wanted to make as many contacts as I want to, want either to a live stream give me, or contest. Yeah, give me some well, the pilot. Yeah, yeah. There's so many. There's so many. Um, it depends in there. True. Right. True. I yeah. mean, right. I, I've busted pileups with 100 watts. Oh, yeah. yeah. You know, mm -hmm. over amplifiers. And it all depends on propagation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if... Time of day, weather. Yeah. The internet contest. is... Yeah. The, 
the the spot is certain propagation is not right mm -hmm. yeah but again but the you, stream the, is not a spot is what we were getting at the stream yeah. is not a spot I well think, yeah I think the stream, okay I, think, I hear you yeah yeah I think the stream would be a spot in the regard you're talking about it and i guess my i guess it's, I, it's I, not a spot in the traditional sense not in the traditional sense no but i guess i would go back to who's going to be watching you on youtube while they're trying the actual contest and make that many are is the person tr standing through the band ignoring their computer going to hear an amp or are they going to be turning on their computer watching youtube no that's true i think it's despite like a really what they say small... about our egos we are not that special yeah. that someone's right. going to contest nope. all day long just to con contact me nope right one time the people the people who are like there are there are going to be a handful of people who just say who see the streamer and they're like ah, i want to make contact with them because i want to hear myself on here but yeah it's such a tiny yeah. amount of people and when i watched uh the the w2re do it like i mean there were people in the chat saying what frequency he was at um and, and giving away that but uh the That's number of self people he worked Mm, true yeah. and that's that's a that, whole nother thing is like true. if somebody else puts a thing in your chat you didn't self spot so right but anyway it's right. um right there wasn't that many people who worked him he was he was cqing and he was just working mm. regular uh, uh you know people on the band and if somebody comes by who's uh who's uh uh watching the stream then that's i guess an extra you know that wouldn't normally have been there but i also bet that that person is working very very few stations which might be a good thing. I mean, you know, get more people on the air, um, gets them interested, and in, sure, they, they, they make that one contact, but they're like, oh, that was not too hard. I'll spin up and make another. Oh, and another, and another, mm. and another, and so on and so forth. Yep. So, so that's yeah. another thing. This is an argument without data. So we're yeah. all talking opinions, right. and right. I bet mm -hmm. the data proves that this yeah. is just not a thing in the first place. Right. right. Yeah. And I, I hope that the people that create these new rules and these new categories, they don't go the, down the rabbit hole of, well, you can stream if you're searching and pouncing, but you can't stream if you're CQing because that then you're st you're on a frequency. You know, I hope that they they do this in a in a in a fashion where it's all or nothing. Mm -hmm. It's baby steps. You know, you gotta you gotta crawl, you gotta walk, you gotta run, um, and they make good decisions and they get input from the contest streaming community before they make a huge decision and say, wait a minute. Whenever you made that decision, were you thinking about these ten things that that affect it? You mm -hmm. know, um, we deal with that at work all the time, where somebody will make a decision and they're not they're not informed of all of the things that it it affects. Mm -hmm. You know, so then you have to play catch up, and it's actually more work to to you know. Then it'd be more I work. Know a group to of about five hundred people that do that all day long. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it. It's. I, I hope that they. I'm okay with them um, taking some time and getting this right the first time. Mm -hmm. But we are still going to be in this this state of limbo until they make a decision or uh, until they come out with their first draft of this is what we should do with contest streaming. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to debate it on contest.com, QRZ, on this chat, on Discord, a anywhere you go. Mm -hmm. There's going to be somebody with a different opinion, which is great. But um, it, it just needs to have some type of structure. Right. Is this actively being worked on, Kyle? Are there active conversations in the, in the contesting world to yeah. change yep. the rules? Yep. So uh, I don't, I don't th you might have not heard me, but uh, K9CT, who is kind of local to Sterling and I, he lives in Peoria, Illinois, and he's got a super station, um, Craig Thompson. He sits on the ARL board of contest ethics or contest. I'm not really sure what the, what the board is. If you go out to um, Society of Midwest Contesters, they have a YouTube page and they have a summit every, not a soda summit, they have a summit every year and it's usually in September. And because of uh, the malware virus, they streamed it online and Craig usually gives his update. Well, they streamed it on YouTube also. They captured it on YouTube. So if you go out there and take a look at Craig's update on um, the board of directors for contesting for the ARL, they got together. And one of the things that he talks about is streaming online. And it came up. And they, I forgot exactly what they said. They, they tabled some topics, but it is a bullet point on a board of directors meeting and they are fully aware 
Um, <laughs> now, do any of the board of directors, I don't know who's on the board of directors other than Craig, are the board of directors privy to how streaming works and, you know, the technology behind it and, you know, what can, what can be fair, what can't be fair, you know, I, mm. I, I don't know. That is, that's the, hey, did you think about these 10 things before you made that decision clause that I'm putting <laughs> yeah. in there yeah. on, I hope that they're getting input because yeah. I don't want them to make an ill decision and be like, well, your decision, you know, I much rather have no decision because the decision that you made now shuts everything down and it makes it impossible to, to stream. And now I, I don't want to do it because it's hard. Right. You know, it should be easy. I should be able to configure my station, configure N1MM, put my OBS up, share a screen, and be on the air. Mm -hmm. I agree. Same here. Good. I had a, you were saying that, and I forgot to what I was going to say, but I agree. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anyway, everyone should go out and take a look at that video. And yeah. if you have comments or questions there is the ARL contesting board send somebody the director the chairman a, a board member figure out who is on that board and send them an email and say yeah. I want to stream contests and, I remember what I was gonna say and the more people that do it the the more traction it gets right yeah okay we're gonna shut gonna it down here that. no I'm just kidding <laughs> go ahead Sterling I'm just kidding no I was gonna, that's literally what I was gonna say I was just wondering <laughs> The thought I had in my head is I wonder if they have some sort of liaison or, or some sort of like like spokesperson of, of, yeah. of streaming to be like, here's how it works. And and this is maybe they contacted Bray, W2RE, because he's kind of the OG who, who started it. And But I don't see any of us getting getting emails or we're at least not not been we're we've not, not told each other contest. that we've been uh, um, contacted by the uh, the ham radio Illuminati. <laughs> mm. But, well, you know, we, we had that discussion in a previous YouTubers bunch, uh, you know, Right. Um, them reaching out and getting it's it's one thing to put on your website hey we're taking comments it's another thing to to actively right. reach out right yep. right so do that yeah that is all and i have a hard limit at five o'clock so that down. works because we've been going for um 56 minutes now mm -hmm. the first 10 minutes of that was just ad lib so um all the rest cut of that out planned. but uh yeah all the rest of it was planned so 73 everybody who's watching please do put your comments below we're interested to know what you think check out all the channels uh i'm checking all the links to the channels below the um five different channels represented here besides mine so um everyone have a good whenever and a weekend or something like that this might be a monday night ham radio upload we'll see we'll see when it posts so uh but 73 to everybody and have a good week 73, yeah. Uh.